All right, mates, howdy doody. In today's video, I'm covering the goblin starting experience, starting off in Kazan, and then moving on to the Lost Isles. So let's get. The wily, cunning goblins of Kazan have lived in relative peace for generations. Though some of their race sided with the marauding orcs during the Second War, most goblins have remained neutral throughout the various conflicts between the Alliance and Horde. Ruled over by corrupt yet highly affluent trade princes, the goblins created a virtual paradise for themselves throughout the islands of the South Seas. Their ingenious feats of engineering and vast trade fleets helped make their island capital of Kazan one of the great technological wonders of the world. But now, as the elements themselves rise up in anger across the world, the goblins' mechanical paradise will be put to the test. For very soon, fate will force them to choose sides in a conflict that will shape the very history of the world. Let's start with a little bit of goblin lore, shall we? In ancient times, Keeper Mimiron discovered Kajamite ore and decided to do some experiments with it, because why not? One particular subject of these experiments were a small primitive race that were minding their own business in the forests near Aldoa. The Kajamite transformed them into a highly intelligent race of creatures known as goblins. Then the sundering happened, and the goblins were cut off from their supply of Kajamite. And without it, it didn't take long before they were just back to being dumbasses again. They took refuge on the Isle of Kazan and pretty much forgot all about their origin and the mysterious ore. They didn't even realise that there was Kajamite on the island with them. After that, the Zandalari arrived. The goblins were enslaved and forced to mine Kajamite, but exposure to the ore made the goblins smart again, and they MacGyvered their way to freedom. And that's about it. The only other thing of note is, as time passed, Kajamite supplies ran low and goblins went a little bit dumb again, which is why their technology has a tendency to not work brilliantly and explode. And they formed several competing cartels, which had a fair few wars with each other, because they're all greedy little bastards. Anyway, our hero today is called Fizzballs. He works for the Kajaro Trading Company, which is a part of the Bilgewater Cartel, and his adventure starts off with Sassy Hardwrench, his executive assistant, walking up to him, like, Sup bruh? Foreman Dampwick has been going mental trying to find you. He said something about defiant trolls down by the mine. We need that Kajamite to make Kajakola. That's where all of our money comes from. If we can get production flowing again, you'll probably finally get that promotion to trade prince or something. So Fizzball's head east and found the foreman. Dampwick seemed kind of pissed off. We've got trouble in the mine, boss. There's tunnel worms literally eating away at our profits. And also, this latest batch of troll slaves are possibly the worst yet. Their attitudes stink. You'd think they hate being slaves or something. Go give eight of them a shock from the battery in your all-in-wonder belt. The rest of them should fall in line after that. Fizzballs ran around killing tunnel worms and shocking defiant trolls, and the mine was saved. Kajakola production could now continue, and all was right in the world. Good job, Fizzballs. Sassy's been pestering me to supply some Kajakola for the surprise party being thrown in your honour. Oops, wasn't supposed to tell you that. Sos, mate. Anyway, here's a six-pack. It's all I can spare, because, you know, the mine's literally only just become operational again. Our hero returned to Sassy Hardwrench. Whilst you were gone, Meg Stradshedder from Marketing was asking for you. Something about your new ride. She's just outside. Meg Stradshedder was indeed just outside. And she presented our hero with a brand new hot rod. You're about to host the greatest bloody party in the history of parties. And it's important to make sure you look like you're having a good time. Because that's how promotions work around here apparently. Why don't you take this hot rod out for a spin and go pick up your friends. Ace, Gobber and Izzy. He'll be the new trade prince in no time. So Fizzballs went for a little joyride. He was having a whale of a time. Go suck a big one, fat bag! Go, 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 That was weird. He picked up all three of his mates and returned to hand that quest in. There were now a few new tasks for our hero. Sassy Hardwrench was like, we need to send a message to a number of deadbeats in Drudge Town. Find Bruno Flame Retardant, Frankie Gear Slipper, Jack the Hammer, and Sudsy McGee. Beat the shit out of them. That'll show you competition who's boss. Fizzballs also spoke to his girlfriend, Candy Kane. Hey, Babs. Are you ready for the party? I think you need to swing into town and buy a new outfit because you look like a homeless person. Go to the first bank of Kazan, get some money out, and don't be cheap. Fizzballs head to the bank first. There was a big queue, but he wasn't bothered. He's basically a celebrity around here, so he just walked past everyone else like a real jerk. The bank teller gave him some money, but also another quest. Buying a new outfit for the party, are you? Well, I'd recommend Swindle Street. They sell all sorts of swag. My hero head to Swindle Street and got himself some shiny bling, a hip new outfit, and some cool shades. That's what they're called in the game, by the way. I'm not, like, trying to sound cool or something. After that, he head over to Drudge Town. He beat up the deadbeats and head back, hoping this fantastic party everyone keeps talking about was going to happen soon. But he'd have to wait a bit longer. 
Megs now wanted our hero to head over to someone called Coach Crosscheck over at Kajaro Field. Coach Crosscheck was the leader of the Bilgewater Buccaneers, which is the local football team. I'm glad you're here, Fizzballs. We have a title match against the Steamweedle Sharks, and you're the only one I trust to help us bring home the trophy. First, we need some replacement parts for the shredders, because they're kind of broken. You'll find spare parts lying around the ground all over the place. So we ran around collecting some parts and head back. Okay, we've only got one shredder left, so this match isn't looking great. But when no one was looking, I loaded it up with some modified foot bombs. Get in the shredder and throw bombs at those Steamweedle Shark twats. Fizzballs entered the shredder and completed that quest. Once he'd bombed eight of the other team's players, Coach Crosscheck was like, You did it, kid! Now we just need to score a goal and the title is ours. Let's make this goal real special. Kick a foot bomb between the two smokestacks over there. Fizzballs didn't understand the rules of this game at all, but he went ahead and kicked the foot bomb over the smokestacks. But before anyone had a chance to celebrate the victory, Bloody Deathwing appeared in the sky. It's hour of twilight time, bitches! The dragon attacked Mount Kajaro, flew around kind of taunting everyone for a bit, and then just buggered off. The ground started to shake and everyone just stood around, a little bit shocked at what had just transpired. Coach Crosscheck approached our hero and was like, Well, that escalated quickly. I would celebrate his winning, but I'm pretty sure that dragon just did something to the mountain, and we should all get the hell off this island as soon as possible. You should probably go tell Sassy what just happened. Upon returning to Sassy, Fizzballs updated her on the situation. Deathwing? Oh dear. Well, it's probably nothing to worry about. Let's just throw your party anyway, and if things get worse, we'll just charter a ship off this island or something. Candy Cane then advised our hero to put on his awesome party ensemble, head over to the pool, and entertain some partygoers. Our hero went to his party and had another whale of a time. He refilled people's drinks, provided peeps with food, he had a pants-off dance-off, there were fireworks and everything. The party was a smashing success, until it was crashed by a bunch of South Sea pirates. Sassy quickly told Fizzballs to kill the pirate party crashers, so he did that. He wasn't about to let a bunch of pirate jerks get in the way of his promotion. He'd worked bloody hard for it. Once they were taken care of, Sassy had even more bad news. I saw Trade Prince Gallywix head inside our headquarters a second ago. I think he might be the one who sent the pirates. You don't want to keep him waiting, trust me. So go speak to him right now. Trade Prince Gallywix didn't seem very happy to see our hero. Well, 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 if it ain't Billy Big Bollocks. Didn't think to invite me to your party, eh? You're an ambitious little shit, I'll give you that. You remind me of me when I was your age. So I've got a proposition for you. Mount Kajaro is going to explode thanks to that dragon. Everyone's going to die. But if you bring me a bazillion macaroons, I just might let you be one of the lucky ones to escape on my yacht. So you'd better get a move on. Fizzballs returned to Sassy and informed her of Gallywix's request. Where the bloody hell are we going to get that kind of money? A whole bunch of new quests to get a bazillion macaroons were now available. Our hero was sent to the mine to collect the last few reserves of Kajamite. He used his hot rod to run over a bunch of looters and steal their stolen stuff. The first bank of Kazan had gone out of business, so Fizzballs had to break in and steal his own money. And finally, he disguised himself as a mook, head into Gallywitz's villa, and stole a whole bunch of priceless antiques and art, whilst avoiding his guard pigs. But after all that, they still didn't have the full bazillion. So, Sassy came up with another plan. We're going to collect on the headquarters insurance policy. We use the leftover fireworks from the party. All you have to do is go in there and sabotage. Fizzballs head inside and did a whole bunch of stuff. He overloaded a defective generator. He turned the leaky stove on, dropped a cigar on his bed, and then ran outside and sent a gas bot inside to finish the job. The headquarters exploded and an insurance claims guy appeared. Another bloody faulty electrical gas flammable bed fireworks accident, eh? Those happen all the time. I can't be bothered to inspect it. We're all about to die anyway. Here's your insurance money. Fizzballs now had the money he needed. There was no time to waste, as Gallywix's yacht was about to leave port. So Sassy took the wheel and drove like a maniac in our hero's hot rod. Shove it up your gunk! Go, 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 When they arrived, Fizzball saw his girlfriend, Candy Cane, already on the yacht. And she bloody dumped him, the cow. Just started getting off with some bloke called Chippendale right in front of his face. And Gallywix was a jerk too. Thanks for the bazillion macaroons. I'm now the wealthiest, most powerful goblin on all of Azeroth. And it sucks to be you, because I'm changing the terms of our deal. You can come on the yacht, but you're my slave now, you little bitch. Get below deck and start shoveling coal. We're off to Ashara. And so they set sail. taking the fall for this one. You're the one who got us lost. What does it matter? Gallywitz is gonna have both our heads. Shh. Did you hear that? Captain, who are they? 
doesn't matter. Our orders are to capture the Horde target at all costs. No witnesses. Our hero now found himself floating on some boat debris just off the shore of the Lost Isles. He was pretty much dead. Two other goblins called Doc Zap Nozzle and Gear Grinder Gizmo were there too. Doc Zap Nozzle recognised our hero and decided, since he was the only reason they'd made it off Kazan and escaped certain death, he'd try and revive him. And it worked! Once he was back on his feet, Gear Grinder Gizmo had a quest for Fizzballs. We got caught in a firefight between the Alliance and the Horde, and some of the survivors are still stuck in their escape pods. Can you swim around and help them? Fizzball swam around and rescued the survivors, one of which was Gallywix himself, which was annoying. The Trade Prince even had the nerve to act as if he hadn't just been a complete prick to our hero. But Fizzballs was the bigger man, plus he didn't really have a choice. When Fizzballs swam to the beach, he found Sassy Hardwrench alive and kicking. Thank the heavens you survived! Unfortunately, our tools and bombs and stuff have been stolen by monkeys. We need to get off this island, so can you get them back or something? Another guy called Max Avalanche approached our hero. Looks like we're not the only victims of those thieving monkeys. They've stolen the Terror Raptor Matriarch's eggs, so she's gone mental. But the more immediate problem is, the eggs have hatched, and now we've got hungry Terror Raptor babies running around trying to eat us, so kill them. And finally, Bam Megabomb walked up and was like, the monkeys that stole our stuff are now throwing our bombs back at us, so that's great. Take these bananas, they're laced with nitro. Go and feed them to the monkeys and then watch them explode. It'll be brilliant. So we did all of that. Sassy then wanted him to report to Foreman Dampwick, who had found a cave full of Kajamite on the island. Sup, Fizzballs? I sent some survivors into the cave to gather some ore, but they haven't come back. And it turns out the cave's full of monkeys using mining picks. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say the Kajamite has made them a little bit smarter. Maybe you can escort my last miner here through the cavern and keep those monkeys off him. That'd be super awesome cool. As Fizzballs entered the cavern, he noticed some strange cave paintings on the walls. But luckily, goblins have belts that are just like Batman's belt, and have pretty much everything in them for any given situation. So he used his camera to gradually take pictures of these paintings as the miner took bloody forever to walk through the cavern. He also found a pygmy altar at the back of the cavern, being protected by some pygmy witch doctor that was like, ha wa ba 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 Fizzballs laughed to himself at that stupid noise, killed the witch doctor and took a photo of the altar as well. He also came across a dead orc scout that was carrying a journal. Basically, the orcs were travelling on a ship called Draca's Fury, carrying some kind of special cargo. Whatever it was, the Alliance seemed hell-bent on getting a hold of it. The Horde had a makeshift camp on the island somewhere, and someone called Agra seemed to be calling the shots. Maybe our hero would go check that out at some point. Once all that was done, Fizzballs head back outside. A pygmy witch doctor? In charge of monkeys? What the bloody hell's all that about? Oh well, guess the Kajamite's ours now, because he's dead. Fizzballs also informed Sassy of the dead orc, and showed her the pictures he'd taken. That pygmy witch doctor seems to be from some new race never seen before. Maybe we should call them Fizzballians. They must have painted all that stuff on the walls. What worries me is that these paintings appear to be of them on an island with a bloody volcano. And there's bloody Horde and Alliance on the island as well. I think it might be time for us to have a little sit down with these orcs. Take that dead orc's journal to this Agra person. Good luck, Fizzballs. So our hero head out to find the orc camp. He followed the path past the Kajamite cavern and head up the hill. And he soon found himself face to face with a very angry looking female orc. Although she was hostile at first, Agra took a deep breath and composed herself. We have a common enemy on this island. The Alliance. Their SI-7 assassins are all over the place, and they're not going to stop till we're all dead. First, I want you to find our hunter, Kilag Gorfang. He head into the Vicious Vale to the west with some scouts. They're trying to find our precious cargo, but the way is blocked by deadly plants. So go help them. Fizzballs found Kilag and explained Agra had sent him, and he was here to help. Kilag kind of looks him up and down, as if to say, you don't look very useful. But then he noticed Fizzballs' belt. Got anything in that belt that'll clear out these plants? And guess what? He did. A weed whacker. Our hero used the weed whacker around the veil and mowed down 100 deadly jungle plants. It was incredible. Well, I guess I misjudged you. We owe you our lives. Do me a favour. Go back to Agra and tell her we still live. Me and my scouts are going to move on to the Wild Overlook. We'll meet you all on the west side of the island. Fizzballs returned to Agra and let her know what Kilag had said. 
and then she sent him back to Killag again, so that whole thing seemed a bit pointless. Next, Killag wanted our hero to find and kill some SI7 assassins. They're bloody stealthy, but maybe you've got something in that belt to find them? Team up with one of my scouts if you do. He did have something in his belt. Of course he did. Fizzballs rummaged around and found some convenient infrared heat goggles. He then took an orc scout and ran around murdering assassins. And after that, Killag wanted our hero to find scout Brax. I sent Brax along the road to the cliff. Jump on the back of my panther. She's called Bastia. She's great. Travel down the path and let Brax know we're going to take a different route. But we'll see you both later on in the video. Bastia quickly took our hero straight to Brax. The Alliance have stolen something of vital importance to the Horde. It's being held out there on their ship. Head down to the beach, steal the flying machine keys from one of their operatives, and then use the gyro chopper to fly out to their flagship, the Vengeance Wake. Go Fizzballs! Get to the chopper! Fizzballs ran down to the beach and stole the gyro chopper. He flew over to the ship and finally discovered what the Horde's precious cargo was. Or rather, who it was. Thrall! The Alliance had discovered him unconscious on the shore and put him in an arcane cage, which was stopping him from connecting to the elements and doing shaman stuff. Both our hero and the war chief head up to the top of the ship, and Thrall was like, It's time to do some shaman stuff. Brothers of earth and fire, sisters of water and air, allow me to channel your power through this little green bloke and put an end to those that would keep us from healing this world. Bit dramatic. Fizzballs now found himself with a cyclone of the elements buff and used these powers to kill 50 humans and pretty much destroy the Alliance fleet. Well done, Fizzballs. Our world owes you a debt larger than you could possibly understand. All right, mate. No need to be a dick about it. There are events taking place that are reshaping our world and will ultimately destroy it. I think it's called the Cataclysm or something. We have to stop it. You should return to your people, Fizzballs. This is goodbye for now, but maybe I'll see you on that larger island over there. Toodles. Fizzballs returned to Sassy again. Everyone was pretty bloody impressed that our hero had just rescued the war chief of the Horde. Guess we're headed over to that larger island. Don't think we'll be able to swim there, though, with all those bloody sharks in the water. But Foreman Dampwick has built this convenient rocket sling to shoot us over there instead. Before Fizzballs could reach the rocket sling, Trade Prince Gallywix rushed past him. You think you're special, do you? Sod off, mate! I've got a plan that'll get me off this island and make me the King of Ashara. So stay out of my way! Gallywix then used the rocket sling and buggered off. What an absolute knob goblin. Our hero then used the rocket sling himself and flew over to the bigger island. When he landed, Foreman Dampwick was waiting for him. You'll never guess what we found in the wreckage of Gallywix's yacht. A town in a box. You can do the honours. Go climb that big pile of explosives and push the plunger. That seemed like a great idea. Fizzballs went ahead and did that. Where's the dock? And the oil refinery? Somebody's frickin' stolen them. Who would do such a thing? Probably Gallywix. Yeah, probably. Anyway, Hobart Grapplehammer wants to speak to you. Hobart Grapplehammer had been inside the town in a box. In fact, loads of people had, which doesn't make any sense, but okay. I'm the smartest goblin in the world and they've got me on food duty. What a load of bollocks. You do it. Take these remote control fireworks and attach them to some wild cluckers and be quick about it. So our hero ran around doing one of those annoying quests where you have to try and click on moving targets. It's a lot more difficult than it sounds when you have a shitty wireless mouse. Back at the town in a box, Bam Megabomb walked up and was like, Hobart thinks he's so smart, and yet he's trying to feed an entire town with some tiny clucker eggs. Well, I've got a better idea. Go up the hill, You'll see some traps that I've laid out. Put the eggs in the traps, wait for the raptors to get themselves stuck, and then bring back some much larger raptor eggs. Genius! So our hero went ahead and did that, and when he returned, Hobart wasn't happy. Who the bloody hell does Bam think he is? Trying to show me up, is he? Well, he's not gonna, because you're gonna go and get the biggest egg ever, and everyone's gonna know that Hobart is better than Bam. Every town in a box is equipped with a mecha chicken. Ours ran off, but I know where it is. Go get its egg, but watch out, it'll probably try and kill you. It did try and kill him, but Fizzballs fought the giant robot chicken and stole its egg anyway. Hobart was extremely pleased with himself. He advised his assistant, Greeley, to load the egg into a machine called the poultry Poultryizer and declared mech nuggets for everyone. But unfortunately, it's a goblin machine, so it basically exploded. The entire town was covered in egg, and what's worse, it was rotten egg, so everything smelled like farts. Okay, fine. Perhaps the whole egg thing didn't work out quite as planned, but it's all right. How about we try and get some shark meat instead? First, swim out to the Dire Strait, to the west, grab some shark pelts, and then give them to Assistant Greeley. Watch out for the massive shark called the Hammer, though. Fizzballs quickly swam around killing sharks for their pelts. He handed those to Greeley, who combined them with the remains of the Mecha Chicken. I've assembled the greatest fighting submersible of all time, the Mecha Shark Extreme. Hobart wants you to pilot it and kill the Hammer. Fizzballs used the shark submarine thing to kill the Elite. It was kind of tough, but he was victorious. And the town in a box was saved because they had a buttload of shark meat now. Shark meat for days. Your work here is done for now, Fizzballs. You should head out to the western entrance of the ruins of Vashalan. Meg's Dreadshedder is there. 
and apparently there's some trouble brewing with the Naga or something. Our hero set off east out of town and followed the path. He soon arrived near the ruins and found Megs. The Naga are preparing to invade our town in a box, and that's not good at all. So I say we take their land instead. Head into the ruins and replace their banners with ours. Fizzballs ran around replacing banners and killing Naga. Megs then had a follow-up. I've got a plan. It's so crazy, it just might work. Step one, we need some Naga babies. Take this irresistible pool pony and go to the Vashaland spawning pool. Those little buggers will see the inflatable pony and follow you around. Bring 12 of them back here and we'll move on to step two. Once Fizzballs had 12 tiny Naga babies following him, he returned to Megs. Now you and your mate, Ace, are going to take those babies to the leader of the Naga. They won't dare attack you whilst you got their babies. Tell their leader to surrender or else. Fizzballs followed Ace through the ruins, and the plan seemed to be working. The Naga kind of hissed at them, but none dared attack. When they reached the southern island, Ace was like, All right, Naga leader, show yourself. Surrender in the names of Fizzballs and the Bilgewater Cartel. However, this is when the plan kind of fell to shit. A faceless one appeared and was like, Who the f*** do you think you are? I don't care about Naga babies. Prepare to die. Ace ran off like a little bitch, and our hero was forced to defend himself against a minion of the old gods. But once again, he was victorious. Upon returning to Megs, Fizzball explained what had happened. Oof. Soz me. Guess we were wrong. Turns out it wasn't even the Naga that were planning an attack on the town in a box anyway. It's the local Umlot tribe. You might want to rush back to town, because those pygmies are already attacking. Take this giant helmet disguise so you can sneak right past them safely. The town in a box was indeed being attacked by endless waves of pygmies, and it was one of the funniest things Fizzballs had ever seen. There were literally hundreds of them running down the hill like, Ooga booga! Oh, wah, 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 wah. He arrived back at the town in a box and saw Megs had also returned. Use the town's cannon defences! Just fire at them or something! Our hero quickly jumped on a BC Eliminator and killed 30 of the bastards. He felt kind of sad about it because he bloody loved them. But thanks to his heroics, the assault was no more. I'm glad that's over. But they took most of our people back to their village. God only knows what terrible horrors await those poor peeps. Go speak to Izzy. She'll explain what the plan is to rescue the captives. On the way to Umlot Village, Fizzball saw that guy again because all good jokes come in threes. This video's a shit show, obviously. Go, 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 go. He's a slippery one, that Taliesin. Our hero found Izzy and she had a couple of quests. Those Umlot buggers are doing weird rituals and sucking the life right out of our friends. Sounds a bit sexy. Shut up. Go in there, kill the shaman, and then free the captives. Also, kill their leader, Ingvi. He's barking nonsense up on the raised west side of the village. Fizzballs entered the Umlot village and did all of those things. The pygmies were all like, Ooga booga wabba da baba. But they had no chance against Fizzballs. He's well odd. Some of the captives warned our hero that other goblins had been taken up into the volcano and either turned into zombies or sacrificed to their turtle god, Volkanoth. So Izzy advised Fizzballs to head back to the town in a box and warn them about the zombies. When he arrived back to town, Sassy was like, A whole bunch of our people went up the volcano to mount a rescue. They're waiting for you before they make their move. Go speak to Coach Crosscheck at the Lost Peak. So our hero ran up the volcano slopes and found the coach, as well as Foreman Dampwick and Assistant Greeley. Coach was up first. Take these super booster rocket boots and kill a whole bunch of those zombies. Foreman Dampwick was like, We should probably take care of the pygmy witch doctors that are creating those monsters. Go to their three villages and take out Gaal, Malmo and Telok. Hopefully that'll stop these zombies once and for all. And Greeley was like, Also grab some of their rockin' powder. It's highly explosive, and we will give those super booster rocket boots an even greater super boost. Our hero had out to do those things, burned a load of zombies to a crisp, killed the pygmy witch doctors, and grabbed some rockin' powder. It was great. Coach Crosscheck then told our hero to use the newly boosted rocket boots to head into the caldera of the volcano itself. So he did that, and went bloody flying. When he landed, he was greeted by Hobart Grapplehammer. Oh great, that guy again. These pygmies worship some giant turtle called Volkanoth, but it's not really a god, it's just a fire turtle. We're going to need a new weapon to fight it, and I say we fight fire with fire. Grab some fire glands from Volkanoth's children, and we'll modify one of those rocket boots again. After collecting ten glands, our hero now needed to use the newly created Bootzooka to slay the giant turtle. He headed into the cave and used his new weapon on Volkanoth, but as the turtle fell, the volcano started to erupt. Luckily, Sassy appeared to the rescue and advised our hero to jump on the flying machine so they could escape the fiery destruction. As they flew through the air, they watched in horror as the lava flowed down the mountain and destroyed the town in a box. Fizzballs was especially upset because he'd spent the last 10 minutes doing quests to protect it. But also, this was now the second time a volcano had destroyed stuff in one video. Sassy flew our hero to Warchief's lookout where they found Thrall and his peeps hanging around. I told you we'd meet again, Fizzballs. 
Unfortunately, some big fat goblin with a crown has taken your friends hostage. And we still need to take out the rest of the Alliance before you can rescue them. We took out their ships, but they still have planes, and they're dropping paratroopers on the coast below. Go kill a bunch of them. Agra also had a quest. I've lost many orcs to these Alliance assholes, but their deaths will not be in vain. Go kill the three SI-7 leaders down there. Commander Arrington, Darkblade Sin, and Alexis Silent Howl. Bring me their heads. And finally, Sassy walked over. The paratroopers are putting landmines on the beach. So take this satchel of grenades and detonate the mines from a safe distance. Cheers, mate. Once again, our hero did the things. The only thing left to do to end this assault completely was to take out the Alliance planes themselves. Sassy pointed fizzballs towards the goblin bomber, the Pride of Kazan, and our hero jumped in. He flew around shooting down Nomragan stealth fighters until the skies were cleared. It was bloody epic. And now that the Alliance had been taken care of, Fizzballs returned to Thrall to see if the Horde would help in the effort to rescue the other goblins from Trade Prince Gallywix. Go back down to the beach and find Killag Gorfang. Tell him I've said you can borrow his panther again. Bastra will take you where you need to go. Fizzballs rode Bastra to Sky Falls and found someone called Slinky Sharpshiv. The Trade Prince has a whole bunch of us inside the cavern. He's forcing them to do manual labour. Greeley helped me escape, but got herself captured in the process. You're the only one brave or crazy enough to walk into an exploding volcano. So get in there and free our people! Fizzwalls found Greeley inside the cavern, but she was in some kind of trance. Luckily, there was some Kajakola lying around on the ground. So our hero forced her to drink some to see if that would wake her up a bit. And it did! Brilliant, Fizzwalls! Find some more Kajakola and free Ace, Izzy, Gobber and the rest of the prisoners. Oh, and also, there's a warlock in here called Blast Shadow the Brute Master. He's got a soul stone, so you'd better destroy that quickly before he resurrects. And he's got a succubus pet too, just to be extra annoying. And you should probably kill some brute overseers too whilst you're doing everything else. See ya! Fizzballs gradually made his way through the cavern, killing brutes, picking up Kajakola and freeing peeps, and he killed the warlock as well. Once that was all taken care of, our hero and the freed captives all head outside. There was about to be another explosion from the volcano, so they jumped into a minecart and escaped just in the nick of time. Well, that was close. Assistant Greeley looked around and realised things weren't over yet. Oh bloody hell! Gallywix must have stowed the entire frickin' Steamweedle Sharks footbomb team on his yacht without any of us noticing. They look like they're gathering lumber. The Trade Prince must be using that dock and oil rig from the town in a box. Go kill them or something. Also, Coach Crosscheck had another quest. Watch it down there, collect some shredder parts. I've got a plan to help you enthrall in your fight against the Trade Prince. We're gonna build the ultimate footbomb uniform. Fizzbomb head over to the lumberyard and murdered a bunch of professional footbomb players. And he gathered some shredder parts too. After that, Assistant Greeley had a follow-up. Okay, we've stopped his lumber supply, but the oil rig's still functioning. We need to bring his machines to a grinding halt. Go up there and release the valves to overload the coolant system, and then use the control panel and set it to blow. Up on the oil platform, our hero went around releasing valves. He then approached the console and saw a big red button. Didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what to do next. Fizzballs also came across that jerk Chippendale that had stolen his girlfriend. So he straight up murdered the twat and ripped his heart out. I guess our hero has a bit of a jealousy problem. Assistant Greeley then informed Fizzballs that Sassy Hardwrench was over by the Slave Pits with some Orcs, preparing for the final attack on the Trade Prince. But when he arrived at the Slave Pits, it seemed some goblins had managed to get themselves captured again for the fifth millionth time. Hobart had a plan though. I would normally say we don't have time to rescue those idiots, but we still have some rockets left over from your ultimate footbomb uniform, so I guess it won't take that long after all. And Sassy had a quest too. Your ex-girlfriend Candy Cane is down there in the pits as well, and what's worse, She's dating Gallywix now because he killed Chippendale. That bloody tramp. Fizzballs rescued the captured goblins and murdered Candy Cane. You can judge him all you want, but the game makes you do it. I don't know if the quest designer was going through a bad breakup at the time or something. Seems a bit extreme. It was now time for the final confrontation. Sassy informed our hero that Thrall was down at the Gallywix docks, fighting the Trade Prince. Jump into your ultimate footbomb uniform and get over there. The Trade Prince had about 100,000 HP, which is a ridiculous amount, but it wasn't too hard. When the Trade Prince fell, he did his usual thing and begged like a coward. Thrall then decided he'd allow Gallywix to remain the Trade Prince of the Bilgewater Cartel for now. I'll send a representative from your people to the new War Chief, Garrosh Hellscream. You'll have a new home in the Shara, and the Bilgewater Cartel will be a part of the Horde. And just like that, Thrall made yet another questionable decision that people use as evidence that he wasn't actually a very good leader. Thrall then advised our hero that he would be the representative to head to Orgrimmar. The goblins in the Horde have accomplished too much together to part ways now. Speak to Sassy when you're ready to set sail. The real adventure begins now. And we're leaving it there! I've been looking forward to doing this video for a while, so hopefully it's not turned out shit. In the next Starting Zones video, I guess I'm doing the Worgen in Gilneas. That should be fun too, because I feel like the Worgen have a bit of a unique feel to them. 
If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!